are live, Paula Mould. I do believe we are live. We are live, Lee Shenton. Absolutely live. Yeah, fantastic, guys. So, so excited to come and share with you again, interview the artist. I'm Lee Shenton. And I'm Paula Mould. And together, we are your business and mindset mentors for creative professionals who want to create sexy as fuck businesses and sell shitloads of their art. And I'm so excited to have Janine with us today. Hello, Janine. How are you doing? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. Yes, thanks. Yeah, it's really How awesome to have you with us. Thank you for coming and sharing um, with us in our, in our space. Really looking forward to diving deep into all the amazing things that you do. So thank you so much for showing up. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. That's brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. So Paula, before we dive into the questions, would you like to read Janine's lovely blurb for us, please? Absolutely. If it wasn't for Janine's love of tea, she'd still be working as a web designer. 11 years ago, Janine created a hobby tea and cake website with a friend. It was this love for all things tea and cake that made her, uh, that made her embark on a journey to create her first wet felt tea cozy. She loved wet felting so much. This was the turning point that shaped her life and where she is today. Janine started out by making uh, felt tea cozies, which soon led into creating felt landscape paintings. Her pieces evolved and changed over the last five years. They now include other materials and fibers along with wool. She sells her landscapes online and in art galleries. Fantastic, Janine. <laughs> Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. So before we dive into those questions, this is my favorite one. Janine, can you tell us, please, how you came to be interviewed by Paula and I today? How did you find us? Um, I was on, uh, it's quite convoluted, really. <laughs> so, <laughs> Go on, tell uh, us. We want to hear it. <laughs> we want to know it all. Uh, so I met another person locally who's an artist, and uh, she's also a coach. And I was on her, her web page, and she told me about Helen Pritchard's five day challenge and said, you know, maybe you, everyone should do this. So I went and did Helen Pritchard's five day challenge. And on it, I kind of asked about whether her challenge would work for artists. And she said, ah, you need to speak to Lee and Paula. <laughs> so I then looked you up and as it happened, I think you had a challenge like a week or two later, really soon after. So I joined, joined, you, joined up then and then went on to do your mastermind um, which I still need to finish because then lockdown happened and I had my children at home full time and uh, I haven't been able to do the work. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so I've done, did, did your five day challenge, then your mastermind and then other more, more free challenges since then. So Brilliant. Yeah, it's been wonderful having you in our world and thank you, Helen, for steering, for steering people to us. We really do appreciate that. It's wonderful, you know, when we're part of this community where everybody kind of helps each other. So um, really appreciative of that and so fantastic to have you. You've been an incredible um, addition to our energy and to our, you know, to our community. So we really, really do love having you here. Um, yeah, it's been awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> I love that tea and cake changed your life. You know, most people are like, tea and cake, <laughs> why did our tea and cake, you know, gave me cavities. And you're like, no, tea and cake gave me a whole career. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Which do you want to expand a little bit on that? Tell us a little bit more about how that came about. Um, so I was, I was working as a, as, as a web designer in Leeds. Um, and then on my break, I went into a local cafe that has art and crafts as part of it. And I saw this beautiful felt tea cozy. Um, and because of the tea and cake website, really kind of locked in on anything that was related. Um, and decided there and then I really wanted to make my own felt tea cozy, but I didn't know how it was made, you know, it was, so it took quite a long time to find a workshop to find out, you know, is it wet felting, needle felting? Obviously I knew nothing about it all. So eventually found four years later and two babies later, <laughs> found a workshop, <laughs> a wet felting workshop. Um, and my friend Sam, who was the tea and cake on the tea and cake website with me, she came with me. Um, only the felt, felt thing workshop I found wasn't to make a tea cozy, it was to make a bowl and a, a brooch. 
And so I emailed the college and said, I'd like to make a tea cozy. <laughs> Oh, I think we lost her. Oh, I think we've lost her. Whoops. What do we do oh. now? Well, this is the first time this has happened. Well, hopefully uh, she'll pop back on. I think you're back with us, Janine. There was a little oh, struggle right. there, but not to worry. You, <laughs> you got to meet, we last heard you when you said you got, you got, got hold of the college and told them, I want to do a tea cozy. Yes. <laughs> So uh, having now done workshops of my own and taught people, I, I don't know how I'd feel about someone saying, I don't want to make what you're making, <laughs> I want to make something completely different. But anyway, she let us and, um, and here it is actually. So I thought oh, I'd bring it. it. This is my first ever tea cosy. Oh, beautiful. Got a landscape on it. And, and then I sewed li these little beads in as well. Oh, that's wonderful. So, um, yeah. Um, Excellent. Yeah, the first. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's such a lovely story, isn't it? it? It's just really, really fun. It's all a lot of serendipity that uh, gets involved in that and uh, awesome. But I want to know, I mean, because wet felting is so unusual and all that. I want to know what you absolutely love about it, what you love about the work that you do and, and the medium that you use. Um, I suppose initially I love going out for a lovely walk in the countryside to kind of get my inspiration and I take lots of photos. And then the actual wet felting part itself is just a, a really lovely process. So you um, pull, pull the, the strands of wool um, off and you create, um, a lot of people call it painting with wool. So you literally buy all your different colours as you would tubes of paint and, uh, and then you lay them out on, on a flat surface uh, and create your landscape. And then at the very end, and part of that is now I now include materials like silk or uh, anything that is an open weave so the wool will actually go through the open weave and glue it in place so you don't use glue at all it's the wool that goes through the weave and, and locks it in place um, and so the first part is the wet felting itself where you cover the whole <laughs> the whole piece in a hot soapy water and shrink it down and then after that, once it's dry, I then needle felt into it as well. But I do just love the feeling of, of wool um, and, and the texture of it and, and then adding more texture to it with the needle felting and hand sewing into it afterwards as well. Beautiful. Um, it's like assembling, but very, very um, rich and textured and, you know, you're dealing with your senses. I bet it smells um, interesting as well because wet wool... It would smells have... like a sheep, yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is really nice. <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> which I had pet sheep as a child so I don't know if that's all linked in as well so um, oh that's beautiful yeah yeah how, how amazing I mean it, as Paul was saying it's like a really tactile experience but I just I love the idea of bringing the farmyard into your studio um <laughs> having that whole sort of experience it's like all of your senses are being you know are being tantalized by by that it's really really amazing I mean, I've seen quite a few of your pieces and I've, as I've said before, I cannot wait to see one of them in person because honestly, the, you know, the way you put your landscapes together literally blows me away. I just think it is oh, magnificent you. to see, to, you know, to, to see what you do. And as people are jumping on, if you guys have got any questions that you'd love to ask Janine, please do put them in the comments. We've got quite a few people saying, you know, amazing, we'd love to try this. People saying, hi, it looks great. So if you've got any questions around Janine and her amazing art, please do pop them in the question in the comments and we will get around to, to hopefully Janine can answer those for us, you know, on this live. <laughs> and if you're catching the replay, hashtag replay, and Janine will go in and answer any questions on the replay in the comments as well, which is absolutely amazing. Let's get on to some more questions. And I've kind of lost my place, but okay. Let's get on to this one. So tell, tell me, Janine, what is the biggest challenge that you feel you've had to overcome as an artist? Is there something that really stands out for you? I think uh, putting yourself and then putting your art, especially out there for the first time and showing people your artwork. And then, you know, how, how to actually go about building, you know, a business around it and an audience and, you know, as an artist, we all know how to produce our art, but we don't know how to get, to, get out there, if you like. So um, I think that's the biggest challenge. 
you know we all face really as yeah. as artists Mm. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, it is a big one because artists tend to want to just spend all of their time in the studio, which is fine. Um, and, you know, but 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 falling in love with marketing yourself, you know, as you've been as you've worked with us, you kind of really get starting to get a handle of that. It's just lovely to see artists embrace that idea as well, and that it doesn't have to be so scary, and that it is a whole lot easier than we we actually think. So yeah, nice one. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Professionally speaking, what is the thing you are most proud of? Yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot and it's hard to pinpoint, but um, one lovely thing that happened rec just last week, um, my youngest came to me and she showed me a picture of um, some poppies that she'd drawn. And I said, oh, have you been influenced by the walk that we've just been on and we've just seen lots of poppies? And she said, no, mummy. I was influenced by you and I just thought that was really I felt really proud of that um but otherwise professionally speaking you know I, I feel very proud of um when I walk it you know I've had a few pieces in art galleries and I've got some in a in a local one in Lincolnshire called the rope walk and when you walk in and see your work on the wall that's a very you know proud moment so yeah I think um, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. I love the story about your daughter, though, because I think quite often um, we don't maybe fully appreciate what our family is thinking about stuff like that. So no, all that they even, all that they even notice what you're doing, really. Yeah. <laughs> so. Or in my personal case, it was like, "Mummy, would you please, you know, would you please get dressed in some clothing that's not covered in paint or something?" <laughs> <laughs> Major embarrassing moments for my poor kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, as as parents, we do our choices and how we approach the things that we love doing does give our kids permission to do the same thing. So if we deny ourselves our joy and our pleasure and our creativity and all that, um, we teach our kids to deny themselves that as they grow up too. So by doing your work, you're giving your kids permission permission to be themselves and to explore who they are and what they want to do, which is really, really powerful. Um, because two of my three kids are heading into the art field because oh. I chose that for myself. It changed everything for them. So super important, especially for people who are watching. Um, you know, if you're a parent or you have influence over somebody who's younger, your choices do have a positive impact on uh, on their choices. It makes a big, big difference. So that's a really great moment to be proud of for you, you know, knowing that you're, yes. you're watching yes. and influence. That's just amazing. Yeah, I, told, uh, I told my husband this morning, um, what my proudest moment was, and I cried when I, when I was telling him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that. I love anyway, that. I'm, I'm all right today. So that's yes, you, you didn't have to actually, um, I don't know, screenshot that moment or something, and you know, or, or, or definitely keep you know this recording and show that to your daughter as time goes. Yeah. Because I think that's a, it's a really special, poignant moment for both of you. You know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what's the best advice you have for an artist who's just starting out or what do you wish you had known when you were starting out making your art? Ah, I think advice wise um, would be to believe in yourself firstly because there's a lot of self-doubt isn't there often especially when you're starting out and secondly would be to invest in yourself on the business side of things because like I said before um, you, you know as an artist you generally know what you're doing in the art world but in the business world you know I just had no idea at all which is why I ended up coming and doing your course so I would say invest in yourself and invest in doing a course like yours definitely so fantastic really good yeah. nice little plug there thanks which is <laughs> just a perfect segue into the next question and um what is the biggest takeaway that you have after working with us? Is there one thing that really stands out for you? Um, I think that, well, there's so many, <laughs> it's hard to pinpoint, but, <laughs> but what I'm actually doing right now is, is just trying to be, you know, during lockdown is kind of be consistent, keep posting, um, keep an active presence. So that's my biggest takeaway right now is, is to just keep, keep being consistent and keep going and, and, and being active and present um, yeah. and posting. Yeah, showing up, letting your audience know you're still yes. out. <laughs> yes, because 
because it's amazing how quickly people can can you know can forget I mean, if, even if you think about like super super famous musicians or you know movie stars or whatever you know they say you're only as good as your last movie or your last song and if we don't hear from them for a while we kind of not that we forget because i mean they're super famous but they're not sort of so in the forefront um mm -hmm. but it's amazing how quickly you can build your own audience if you are showing up and it's wonderful to see the way you are showing up even with all this crazy stuff that's going on um you know for anybody who doesn't know go and follow janine and what you know what, what watch the stuff that she does it's really exciting to see her embrace this this marketing idea it's really good I stuff know. We actually have a question for you from the uh, live feed here. Oh. Uh, Sherry's asking, Janine, do you work alone or with other felters outside of lockdown? Um, I work alone, um, but I have I recently joined the International Felt Making Association, um, but I haven't yet been to a meeting because the first meeting was cancelled because of all the floods. <laughs> and the second one because of COVID, so I don't know when I'll actually get to meet any of them. So. <laughs> But hopefully one day I will meet these are the members that I've uh, joined to be part of. <laughs> so awesome. Uh, Unfortunate so, timing. Uh, Mark, yeah. is asking, Mark is asking, do you have any favorite artists who have influenced you? Um, yes. And now I'm trying to rack my brains. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Isn't that well, the case? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Gorky, that was it, Ashal Gorky. So uh, as I, I did my degree in fine art painting and drawing and Ashal Gorky was my favorite artist back then. Um, and currently, Julie, uh, I love Julie Dumbarton's paintings. Yes. I look at a lot of painters really um, to be influenced by and, uh, you know, enjoy their work. Um, there are, quite a few lovely felt artists as well um so yeah but my all-time favorite is ashal gorky i don't know if you've heard of him <laughs> so I'm, I'm, gonna to I'm gonna have to no. go I'm, I presume, yeah. I'm presuming it's a man yes okay. from a he was kind of picasso era you know and okay. he was influenced by picasso but then developed his own style uh, he is in the tate in uh, london There's okay. big oh Beautiful. Yeah. I know Julie Dumbarton. I mean, I can clearly yeah. see now that I know that she's one of your influencers, I can see how painterly your work is. There's that, that touch of, of um, her energy in your work, which is really, really wonderful. Um, yeah, she's brilliant, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. And Sherry's saying, yeah. yes, your work is very painterly. So, and the next question is, do you have a website? And that's actually our question is, where can people there, find you? There are more questions before that, though, Paula. Oh, when are there? Did asking, I miss asking, saying, beautiful work. How do you sell your work and where? He's asking you about how you how do you sell your work. Ah, um, at the moment, I have a Etsy shop, which is Janine Jake's Art at the end. So if you go to the Etsy website and then Janine Jake's Art, um, I need to put more in it. <laughs> um, otherwise, well, mainly just through the Etsy shop, otherwise uh, the sale posts that I should be doing, <laughs> yeah. uh, I sell through. Um, I have I have got a, a Facebook page, which is Janine, all, all my links are Janine Jake's Arts. I've got a Facebook page, an Instagram page, uh, Etsy, which is, and then LinkedIn, and the YouTube one, which won't allow you to have a sensible URL until you've got 100 subscribers, so... Um, if you, yeah. if you Google Janine Jakes on, well, search on YouTube, hopefully I'll turn up eventually. <laughs> so. Yeah, go, go and follow Janine. Let's get her numbers up so she can hit the, hundred, yeah. the, the, the magic hundred number and get her own unique URL. Definitely do that, guys. I have posted quite a few of the links in the comments, about, I mean, in, in the description above. But Janine is going to go ahead and post all of her links in the comments below so guys go and follow her janine's work is amazing um i have seen several of your pieces and i've even seen some of the ones that you've painted and i'm thinking oh janine is so multi-talented here <laughs> um yeah your work is extraordinary that it, it, it exudes this kind of i don't know it's almost like translucent. i don't know how you can make wool look translucent but 
that's how it is. Your pieces just exude this incredible light and dimension. It's really, really beautiful. Thank you so much, Janine. Is there anything else you want to add or say or let people know? No, I think, <laughs> I think that's it. Thank you very much. I just want to say thank you very much to you too. You and Fantastic. It's been absolutely for having having me on. <laughs> yeah, it's been absolutely brilliant. And guys, go and follow Janine like crazy. If you've got any more questions, you know, whether it's now on the replay, Janine will go in and answer all of those questions for you. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. Having thank you. you thank yeah. you very much. And for everybody else, we've got another episode next week. Not quite sure who it is. I know it's in our diary, but we've been so crazy busy um, with our five day free challenge and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but we will be live, same time, different place, because I'll be on Paula's personal profile next week. Thank you so much, guys. We love you lots, and we'll catch you soon. Bye. Bye.